What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Mark Higgins for record-breaking point of view Isle of Man TT lap. This video was actually recommended in the comments section of a previous Isle of Man TT reaction I did. I think this was the video where I watched Peter Hickman doing a lap wearing a chin camera. And I really thought that point of view was really cool. And so when someone recommended this to me, I was really excited because this is actually the first time I'm going to see someone race a car around the Isle of Man TT course. And so uh, this should be very interesting. It's just gonna give me a different perspective. And considering this isn't just seeing people race a car around the Isle of Man TT course, this is actually from their point of view from, I guess a dash cam or something, it's from the point of view of the driver, I suppose. This should be a very interesting uh, video to watch. So anyways, guys, I don't really know what to expect except this should be a lot of speed and should be really cool. And uh, so let's just go ahead and dive in and check out Mark Higgins doing his record breaking lap around the Isle of Man TT course. A hundred and twenty nine miles per hour lap record. That's intense. Well, it's 2016, and uh, this is our chance to drive the Pro Drive built SVI Subaru. Um, oh, dude, Subaru I love Dream this Bay layout. 2011, when we started this project, and uh, this car is very special. Uh, we've got uh, not massive amounts more horsepower, but the chassis is based around a World Rally car. Oh, uh, dude, this is so cool. Before, and. Uh, the gearbox is a sequential type paddle shift gearbox and we're probably running about 1200 kilos so on this lap we're just starting our warm-up um, we've got probably about three miles to get the tires up to temperature like we did in 2014 and me get my head ready to go uh, for the run the conditions at the moment are very warm probably a little bit too warm for optimum performance in the engine and this is actually our second time lap around the circuit, which was done on the Monday of TT week. Every All right, guys. So can someone explain to me what he's doing here? He's uh, swerving left, right, left, right, left, right. Uh, is it? Is he just warming up the tires? Is that, is that what he's doing there? Because um, he did say something about warming up the tires, so I'm guessing that may have something to do with that. But, guys, I love this layout, man. I mean, you got not even – it's in mile per hour over here. He's going 102, it doesn't even seem like it, wow. Um, he's got his heart rate, his respiratory rate, skin temperature. This is really cool, I like this. G-Force. You're actually changing the setup of the car and just developing, because there's nowhere like the Isle of Man to test. And uh, you can test on an airfield or a racetrack as much as you want, but there's nothing actually like the TT course. Dude, it doesn't even seem like he's going 138 miles per hour, dude. So we're getting quite close now wow. to the last few bends. I'm just uh, getting the feel again of the car. Um, okay. As you can see, getting plenty of heat into the tires. That's what he's doing. He's getting and, uh, the feel of the car. Looking forward with anticipation for the start of the run. This part of the circuit is very slow now. And we've got one tight hairpin right. And once we go around that, we're basically on our flying starting lap. So here we go, we're now accelerating for the flying start and we're just about to go across the start line now. Okay, so this is the, the official beginning of the lap here. Famous part for me is Bray Hill. So all that was just him warming up. 170 miles an hour now, which is definitely faster than before. Dude, that's crazy, man. And again, building confidence through that. And that dip on the side does move the car around quite a bit. So we when I was seeing this before, uh, the, with the... Uh, Peter Hickman doing his uh, point of view with his um, chin cam, it, I couldn't tell how fast he was going. A lot of people were saying that uh, they didn't even the speedometer didn't even work because um, it would it would distract the driver. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not uh, because I felt like I could see that this the speed was changing, but I just couldn't read it because it was just kind of blurry. 
um, down there. But this is so cool being able to actually see the, the speed he's going. And it's hard to believe he's actually going these speeds, man. It's just, it doesn't even seem that fast. I mean, it seems fast, but not like 165 miles per hour fast. But this is crazy, man. Imagine being in that car and uh, the control it takes to keep that thing on the road, uh, especially when it goes around the curbs and stuff. Can't take that flight yet. Going these speed, man. First big braking point. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a... All the way down to second gear. Bit of oversteer there. The tire's probably a little bit cool. And one feature we got for this car, which makes it a little bit more interesting, is we've got DRS, like a Formula One car. Now you'll actually see uh, when the red light comes on, that's when we're activating it. And the more confident I got with the car, the more I could actually use the DRS to give us more top speed and reduce the drag. Flat out now all the way to Union Mills. And this car was just a total pleasure to drive. You can carry a lot more corner speed. That's where we're getting our time. We're not actually going that much faster in terms of top speed, but we're getting to that top speed a lot faster. Yeah, I agree. This this car looks like it would be a lot of fun to drive. Bump on the inside, and now it gets really fast all the way to Griba. Uh, the only corner in the middle of that is Balagari or Balasgari, as we all name it. So again, getting up to 170 quite quickly. Little lift here, and then tip it in. Oh, he looks so close so to the wall exactly over there. <laughs> Every lap I get out, and I was hoping for another lap. And uh, there's a few places where we could have edged a little bit more time, uh, just with confidence in the car. You've wow, man! The TT course. Um, if you All take right. it flat and it's not, you're in a lot of trouble. So you've actually got to build up. Now it's feeling really fast. You do on those corners, and that just comes with time and experience. Flat out now, we've got a little jump, and we've got to be careful because at 170 miles an hour, that car potentially could fly. <laughs> Uh, so we yeah. uh, we're unsure what That's it's going to do with the jumps. So you've got to be a little bit wary when you're getting up to those speeds. Yeah, can you imagine coming over one of those Ruby bumps? Castle, down just one gear. And jump at that car at 170. Trying to get on the power, committed and nice and early. That's crazy, man. You'd be out of completely out of control, and you know, in that moment, as if all your the wheels came off the ground, really. Is, is really really great. So heavy braking all the way down into third on the power early. This car looks so smooth, man. Tricky little corner there, you gotta get right in on the inside. And now we get onto what is quite a good section for the car because it's uh, there's quite a lot of corners, so we can gain a little bit of time and with our corner speed through this lot all the way to Glen Helen. He can gain speed through the corners. I would figure he won't want the I'd straightaways more than the, the corners. Was the gap between gear five and gear six. Uh, the ratios and the engine power seem to really help this car, so I'm gaining a lot of time just in that upper end of the gearbox. Dude, he's taking these curves at 120. That's crazy, it's man. With the paddle on the right-hand side, and pull it back to go up the gears and push it away to go down, and it's a six-speed um, gearbox. I can imagine this car... Change just as because it's so low to the ground it uh it sticks really well to those it's curves a cottage, a very big climb you can't really see it on the tv difficult corner that and now we start building power all the way up the hill again to get onto the uh, next section helicopter always comes into sight here you can see that above oh yeah is that it right up there yep Oh man, this will be the fun part right here. Oh, dude! What a scary corner at the end. Just tips it in right. There's a pump on the inside. For oh, dude, this will. Oh man, this will be so much fun there. right here. Be a little bit careful. We've got a flag being waved for um, loss of adhesion. There's been a bike off and hit the barrier on the right. So they've had the oil flags out. As you can see, the dust on the right and the bike still parked there. Look for the walls now, drop it down one gear, and I think we dropped it down two gears last time. Tricky bend now, double 
apex right, flat left, and then a double apex left. Is it possible for someone that's just a regular amateur person that doesn't normally race, uh, such as myself, would it be possible for someone like me to race around the Alaman TT course? How would you go about doing that if that's possible? Um, I, that would be so fun. Obviously, not to try to uh, you know beat the record of one of these professional guys or anything, but just just for fun, just to do it. Uh, this would be a blast, man. I would absolutely love to do this if I could. Now coming into Kurt Michael. Always great through here. And they're uh, using the yellow lines. You can see the, well, the impression of speed you get with the proximity of the houses is uh, really impressive. Wow. So I'm moving around quite a bit there. Yeah, the perspective place people are on the left. of how fast he's going uh, between those houses is just... Get the car straight just before it goes over the jump. That's amazing. It's just so cool that kind of the perspective you get of seeing the houses pass by like that. All the way down to the famous uh, jump at the left. Back up at 170 miles an hour, these corners are really nice. Just nick a bit of curb on the left-hand side on the next one. Wow, man. As you can hear from this car, it does sound amazing, and it's also revving quite a lot higher than the previous car. We're up to about 8,500 RPM, which is quite a lot for a turbo engine. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, this is a beautiful-sounding car. Um, by the way, I see him get up to around 173, 174. Is that him topping out? Uh, I wonder if this car can go any faster. Because uh, it seems like he's topping out about 174, I think is the highest I've seen. And we can't jump it too high here because of the oh man, that was um, bodywork on the car. Would have been a crazy jump if he came by too quick, anyway, too fast. So as soon as he's back on the ground, back on the power and flat out, all the way to Balakrai. This next corner feels really good. It's a flat out left hander. car takes off oh, and then we tip it into quarry bends which is a series of right left right oh 175 176 okay so he wasn't topping out at 174 car pulling quite good g there all the way to ramsey car bouncing around quite a bit By the way, look at his heartbeat, man. That just goes to show you that racing is actually a legit sport. You know, I mean, it's it's actually very physical. I, I think a lot of people don't really understand that. If, you know, they think of someone behind a wheel driving and how could that be physical? But when you look at uh, how fast their heart rate gets up, because they're so they've got to be so on point with their reactions and whatnot that. Uh, you got to be really fit to do to race like this professionally. You really do. Bit of a kick on the bump there. That was quite nasty. And for the bikes, they must have a hell of a hard time uh, hanging on all the way through here. So does Mark Higgins actually ride bikes too, or is he just does he just race cars? Back up to one seventy again. And then real hard braking all the way down into second gear for Ramsey Parliament Square. A little bit of oversteer, but not too much. Always feels great going sideways, but unfortunately it's not great for the lap time. Now the climb starts. Oh, this is where they start going out into the... Uh... I don't know what to, how you describe it, but they kind of go out to that that more mountainous feeling area. And now into first gear around the uh, Ramsey hairpin. 
Now the heat had just started to give us a little bit of understeer with the car. On our very first run, we had an oversteer balance. We changed it for this lap um, and probably went a little bit too much the other way. So there was a little bit more time to come from the balance. Yeah, I think this may be my favorite part of the course that I remember seeing on some of the other videos. When he starts getting up into the hills kind of, and it's just kind of get, gets open and it's just got this beautiful view. I do like when they come in past the, the town, the, the house and stuff too though, because it just kind of gives it a cool dynamic. But uh, the Isle of Man just seems like it's a really beautiful place, uh, a really great place to uh, do a race, especially on a nice sunny day. Hundred and fifty beats per minute. So the tires aren't really getting mega warm. There's no big loads, and it's always um, very, very high speed corners. Oh man! A lot yes. Of that a bike is always. Oh man, that uh, quite as fast that's such a beautiful. Circuit, but mostly straightaway. Most he had there. The speed and the lack of tight. I love this part of the course. At the top of the mountain mile. Big long left, right, left. You can see the windscreen is starting to get quite covered with flies. Um, wasn't too bad at this time of day, uh, but I didn't want to risk trying the wipers because it could actually make it worse. So you better just to get on with it and ignore it. A great board up there somebody showing p1 it's amazing how many people are just out here seems like you're just out in the middle of the country they're just the entire course just people are lined up everywhere we were the only car on the circuit so i thought that was quite i don't even know where they're parked where where are these people parked at oh wait there are some cars there okay nasty left don't really like that corner and now we're heading all the way down uh, for the last uh, sort of sector of the lap. Real nice feeling on these uh, three left hand corners. One, two, bang. Oh man, that was nice. Windy corner, upper gear from last time. Fifth gear. And again, just picking a bit of understeer, we just run wide. We just get the wheel on the grass there. But it's no drama. Look at that view, man. Such a beautiful place. Such a beautiful course, man very difficult to get the car pulled across to the right hand side before the next left you're traveling so fast that's 170 and you definitely don't want to get that one wrong <laughs> next is kate's cottage Oh, oh man, that looks so there. close, dude. And now flat out down to the Craig Navar. Loads of people around watching. <sighs> oh man, he seems so close over there to the crowd. Well when people are waving, which maybe, definitely helps. Maybe it wasn't as close yeah, as it looked right. like, but it looks so close. Because they look like right on the edge of the road, basically. The big long left-hander. Dude. Again, back up at 170, 175 there. And got real tight right-hander. Gives me a chance to give the handbrake a little pull. DRS wide open again. And uh, here we go for the line. Boom! And there we have it. Lap around in 2016 at an average speed of 128.7 miles an hour. Wow. Guys, this was awesome. You know, I almost felt like I was playing a video game during this. I don't know if they've actually created a video game of the Alaman TT course, but if they haven't, uh, someone should do that. I'm sure it would sell really well, but uh, I really liked the way this was set up so I could kind of 
see how fast he was going at all times and kind of see a little bit of what the driver was going through up here. It really goes to show you really do need to be really physically fit to uh, be a professional racer. I don't think a lot of people understand uh, how much fitness you do need to be able to do something like this professionally. But uh, this was really cool. It just gave me a different uh, perspective on the Alaman TT course. You know, this is the first time I'm seeing someone do it in a car. And, uh, you know, I think this would be a blast, man. Um, I would love, love, love to be able to uh, race a car on the Alaman TT uh, course. Obviously, probably not at the speeds that they're going around those curves and stuff, but it would just be fun, you know, to take a car out on 100, 120 miles per hour. Um, down this course it would just be amazing I, I i don't know if that's possible but if it is i would love to someday be able to potentially do that but um i'm guessing maybe they do have some points that so uh just amateurs can go and and uh, race their cars um but yeah that would be so much fun guys anyways guys thank you so much for stopping by please click that like button feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others and don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my british and irish ancestry until next time guys peace